Great Britain has a collection of varied landscapes and countryside to rival anywhere else in the world. And the best way to see it is to walk. And we are here to provide some ideas and inspiration. We are the team at Walks Around Britain and we've been discovering some of the most interesting and varied short walks from the Highlands of Scotland to the Channel Islands. We've been there discovering the best walking Britain has to offer. If you thought walking was just about mountains, then think again. We've got walks in the countryside, along water and the coast, through woodlands and forests, up fells and hills, around historic buildings and our industrial past. And not forgetting walks through our towns and cities. Walks to do by yourself, in a group, or with your family, be they the human or canine kind. Along the way, we'll be telling fascinating stories about the landscape, its people and its history. It's all designed to get you out and inspired to experience it for yourselves. Welcome to Walks Around Britain. Hello and you're very welcome to another edition of Walks Around Britain. Now on today's programme we go to Anglesey and to Staffordshire for two great short walks. Wetton in the Staffordshire part of the Peak District National Park is our destination later. But first it's to North Wales and a walk just outside Holyhead on Anglesey. The walk starts at the RSPB Visitors Centre and around to see Southstack and the lighthouse before passing Hollyhead Mountain and up to see Northstack. The three miles includes getting back to the visitors centre and it will take a minimum of two hours. We've parked at the RSPB South Stack. It's free so a purchase at the visitors centre is a welcome contribution to help the society's work. Olivia and I are walking on what is the hottest day of the year so far and I bet we'll be glad of any breeze coming off the sea. The walk starts by walking down South Stack Road to the lower car park. This is the path we'll need. But as well as looking afar for wildlife, always look down too. This butterfly is the wall, displaying its characteristic basking behaviour on the scrub at the side of the footpath. On the way, there's a talking label full of information about what you might see on your trip today. Please turn me till the message plays. Have a look at the along the cliff line with a loud pause and red beads. We're heading towards Ellen's Tower, which is now a seabird centre and an information point for the RSPB, but it was built in 1868, originally as a summer house. At the back of the tower, there's a great view of Southstack, the island. Here's where we begin to climb. And this higher vantage point shows off Southstack Lighthouse. The 28 metre tall tower has been guiding vessels around this coast since 1809. The cliffs around the island form the South Star Cliffs RSPB Reserve. And the cliffs here provide nest sites for as many as 9,000 seabirds, including puffins, guillemots, razorbills, kittiwake and fulmers. <laughs> Tiny
trying to climb again. Olivia's guiding us with the OS map, but most of the walk out to Northstack is along the Anglesey Coastal Path, which predates the All Wales Coastal Path by some six years. Here's where you can walk across to the lighthouse, thanks to the replaced bridge which opened in 1997. There are some 390 stone steps down to the footbridge, and amazingly, a similar number on the way back. We've enough stone steps on this walk at the moment. And we're always looking down to see what we can spot. This next section is a bit of a ridgeway walk along the top of the cliff. And this is our first real sighting of North Stack. Like South Stack, North Stack is the island to the left here, with the set of white buildings on the headland opposite the Old Fog Warning Station. And as its southern cousin, the island of North Stack is home to seabirds aplenty. Olivia has spotted some people on the side of Hollyhead Mountain, which is a low to mid-grade climb on this south-facing crag. We might not be climbing Hollyhead Mountain today, but the rise and falls of this coastal path is nothing to be sniffed at and the heat today is beginning to take its toll on us both. The whole of the Anglesey coastal path is 124 miles, and apart from some brief sections, pretty much hugs the coastline. It starts and ends officially in Hollyhead, and usually takes around 7 to 10 days for most walkers. The lighthouse at Southstack seems a long way away now. On the far side, we can clearly see the breakwater at Hollyhead Harbour. Some seven million tonnes of local stone was used to create this breakwater in 1873. These walkers at the trig point on Hollyhead Mountain are currently the highest people on the island of Anglesey. Southstack is even further away now. And from here, there's excellent views of Northstack Island and its bird colony.
The walk carries on down to the edge of North Stack, but as it's so warm, we're heading back now. And it's a simple matter of retracing our steps. And then back to the visitor's centre. So, Olivia's little legs really did well on that inclined walk along the coast. And after the break, it's time to go to Staffordshire for a fantastic walk to a cave. Welcome back. Now the whole family journeyed to Staffordshire for a fantastic walk with a huge cave at the end. So this three mile walk is in the Staffordshire part of the Peak District National Park, near to the village of Wetton. It starts at Wetton Mills and follows part of the Manifold Way before climbing to Thor's Cave. Allow around two hours, or possibly a bit more, if you have little legs in the group. Mac, Merlin and Misty are coming on this walk, as are my daughters <laughs> Alana and Olivia, who's going to tell you more about today's destination. Thor's Cave is perhaps the most impressive cave in Manifold Valley. So now we're all out of the car, and those who should be are on leads, we can get going. Parking is in an area just off Leek Road, which does get busy, so either get here early in the morning or early in the afternoon, as we have, to hope you find a space. The walk starts and ends by crossing over the River Manifold, here at Wetton Mills. Which is a very popular spot. It's an old corn mill that was closed in 1857 and it has now been converted into a tea room, a scenic picnic spot and two National Trust holiday cottages. Come Mills! So you could choose either to go to the tea room before the walk or afterwards, if you get back before it closes. The river manifold is flowing freely here. Remember this for later. The walk heads around the back of the hill here, on the left. But as this is open access land, owned by the National Trust, we're climbing to the top for a view of where we are going. The impressive Thor's Cave. As there's livestock on this route, there are several gates and styles to contend with, but most are easy to manage, unless you want to try your dog with a style instead. <laughs> Here we cross over Leek Road, and the next section is part of the National Cycle Network. We're also crossing over the River Manifold again, but be prepared for a surprise here. The River Manifold often disappears beneath the porous limestone ground and reappears in Ireland. So that lovely flowing river has all disappeared underground. A fairly level path 
with not too sharp bends usually means one thing. It was once a railway. This is the old railway track of the Leaker Manifold Light Railway, which is now the Manifold Way. And the Manifold Way is very popular with cyclists. At eight miles, it's not too long. And unusually for trails in the Peak District, it follows the valley bottom to provide a more sheltered experience. <laughs> Here's a fantastic view of where we're going. I was in front. Time to cross over that rapid flowing river manifold again. Thor's cave is some 250 feet above the trail, so we've got a bit of a climb through these woods to get to it. Now be on the lookout for a finger sign pointing to the right for Thor's cave. Carry on climbing and you'll soon be here. This is Thor's cave. It's a natural cavern with an opening around 10 metres high and 7.5 metres wide. The view from this ledge is breathtaking. No one is quite sure where the name comes from. Perhaps it's to do with the Norse god Thor. Or well, maybe it comes from the word Tor, meaning a large freestanding rock outcrop. Who knows? But one thing I'm certain about, kids love it inside. Unlike other caves around the country, Thor's cave is open and accessible. given my two a taste for rock climbing. The cave is roughly in the middle of the walk and it's time to head back now along this concession footpath. This section has two styles, which are challenging for humans, let alone dogs. But we 
we've managed. And we're on the footpath towards the village of Wetton. However, we turn left before we get there. To walk back along Leek Road to the car. So the cave really makes that walk interesting for children. And if you'd like to do that walk or any other walk that we do in our series, you can visit our website for the information, walksfernbritain.co.uk. And if you do that walk and you'd like to share some photos or videos with us, you can do that on our social media channels. The addresses are on screen now. Well, until next time, thanks for watching and happy walking. <laughs>